that directly in UCS Manager. So there's our previous ones, uh, which will be timing out very shortly, uh, inactive, and they will disappear uh, at the next polling interval. So you see there, they're offline. And there's our statistics. So again, we've got down to VM level statistics for both of those VMs. And we are running in VM direct path mode. OK, so let's just do a continuous ping to one of those hosts. And we will do a vMotion just to prove that activating VM direct path mode did not break vMotion. I've got a continuous ping going down there to our 2008 AD server. OK, and we'll just have a look at what host that currently is on. So there you go, we are on host 123. So let's now move that onto host 122. Next. So again, this is now reverting back to emulated mode for a few secs. We'll do the V motion. And then once the vMotion is completed, it will revert back to VM direct path mode. OK, so there's a timeout. Two pings lost, and we are back up. And you can see there, our host has changed. So vMotion was successful. Go back into UCS Manager. So you can see there, our new vNix. And again, the others will... The previous ones will just time out in a couple of collection intervals. Uh, but you can see there we've got our full interface statistics down to each individual VM level, uh, just as we had with emulated mode, uh, but now running in direct path mode. OK, so that about covers it. So we've set up VMFX in emulated mode, and then we've done the additional steps to set it up in VM direct path mode. So I hope these videos have helped um, and cleared up any confusion around VMFX um, and hopefully it might save you a bit of config time. Well, thanks for tuning in and see you soon.